And really, I want to thank the Mama Isar Madam and Raven Kumar Sir for his for the nice effort in coordinating. And definitely, uh, before starting my presentation, definitely I want to congratulate the head of the department, Dr. S. Visalachi Madam, because I know that the difficulty in conducting such a program for one week and with the different topics, I found that really I am happy to see that. Uh, there are a lot of different topics, almost three subjects are covered. That is uh, really very difficult. And in addition to that, finding the resource person is very, very important. That is also a difficult task. And I, and I congratulate all the coordinators, those who are uh, working behind this success. And really, I want to thank the opportunity given to me. And today's session, really, we will mainly focusing on the amplifiers. My screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, you can put uh, slide shows. Yes, sir. I will put it. That is what I mean. Ah. Okay. okay. Visible, sir. Ah. Whenever we are talking about the amplifiers, before going to the amplifier topics, so we have to. Uh, since we are all faculty and we have to understand the one concept clearly that uh, whatever be the electronic device, they are all made with diodes because diodes are the basic uh, components or device we can say that from the diodes only the transistors are constructed, uh, transistors are con constructed, they may be taken as a back to back connected, uh, back to back connected diode, back to back connected diode and uh, even though we are having different types of based upon the applications and based upon our uh, generation, we have different types of uh, transistors. Like uh, initially we have BJT, bipolar junction transistor, then we have FET, then for high frequency applications, considering the low power, then we have MOSFET, then gun diode. Like that, there are, we are having so many transistors and amplifiers, but the model, that is what we are used for explaining the operation is entirely different from the model what we are using for analysis purpose. So that is why a student many times they get confused. Uh, even though we are drawing the diagram like block diagram with the three sections P and P or NP and sections, then why we have to go for uh, different types of models? Because of the fact that the simple circuits are used for only explain the operation of the circuits. But whenever we want to actually design any of the uh, electronic circuits, we are in need of what is the minimum voltage that is to be given, what is actually uh, taken place, what amount of current is flowing from where, from which side to which side, or what is the minimum limit or what is the maximum limit. Like that, we have to um, clear cut the idea about this type of uh, quantities whenever we want to go for analysis because uh, the transistor may not be used only for amplification it may be act as a high frequency switches and there are many uh, applications in which we are cascadedly connected the transistor to give more gain but uh, even though we are using the amplifiers or transistors as amplifiers but we have to keep in mind that it is not possible to give a large amount of voltage so that we can able to get maximum amplification. For example, if the transistor has an uh, amplification of two, uh, it is not possible to give 50 volt at the input side so that we can able to get 100 volt. Because sometimes the student may get confused. Sir, uh, what would be the input we given that has to be amplified and we can able to get the output like that student to one thing, but it is uh, actually not like that. Uh, there is a limit because the transistor or whatever be the component, basically it is made up of a diode. So within the limit of the diode, so without taking breakdown, we have to provide input. And similarly at the output side also, if we want to get more current or more current are flowing through it, definitely it will damage the junction itself or may damage the device. And that is why to make the actual analysis, we are using for, we are using going for different models. And this uh, unit amplifier, they will cover BJT small signal model. 
the analysis of common emitter, common base, and common am emitter, and common collector amplifiers. And since different configurations have different uh, types of current, they are flowing to some extent. They are having um, a different uh, analysis has to be done. And regarding MOSFET and common source and common source follower, then it is similar to the common emitter and common base junction. Other than the transistor is replaced by MOSFET. And high frequency analysis is very very important. Yeah, what are the factors that will affect the system? Whenever we are going for high frequency, so that means that we have to clear, you know, that not only the input signal but the frequency also play an important role. Because whenever we are going for high frequency applications, the normal transistor will not work properly because of many problems. And whenever we are going for high frequency applications, like if you want to use a transistor at uh, microwave frequency, then we are using this transistor but in a different structure they are to use construction wise they are different because whenever we go for high frequency the size of the component will become very very small the size of the component will become very small so we have to consider that also and the small signal model before going there we want to uh, think about what is small signal model that is amplifiers used for low frequency applications are Analyzed using techniques of low frequency analysis. In such analysis, the junction capacitance are considered open circuit as they have high reactance. Because we know that Xc equal to 1 by omega c, so it is a frequency factor. So whenever frequency is small or higher, that will create the affect the operations. So based on the amplitude of the input signal, the amplifiers may be called as small signal and the large signal amplifiers not based on the frequency, based on the amplitude of the input signal, the amplifiers may be called as small signal or large signal. In small signal amplifiers, the variation of the output current about the Q point is small, because we know that whenever we want to make any analysis, the Q point is very, very important. And uh, taking the Q point as the center point, we have to make or operate the transistor for uh, proper conditions. So if the signal, what are we, we are giving that is nearer to the Q point or the variations of the uh, output current is about the Q point is small, then we can call that as small signal amplifiers. Because whenever if we use the transistor for high frequency applications, that is entirely different. But if we want to use the transistor with the high signals, then sometimes uh, if you are operating beyond the Q point, that some portions of the uh, whatever be the signal we are fed that may be possible to cut out. So remaining portion only will be uh, some portion will be eliminated. So small signal models are somewhat different from the high frequency signals models. And due to small input amplitudes, there exists uh, linear relations between IB and IC in the region of operations because of the small input amplitudes. Small signal operation is the one in which the AC input signal voltage and current are in the order of plus or minus 10% of present value. And we can take this as a limiting point. And whenever the input signal is exceeding plus or minus 10% of the present value, then we can say that that is a large signal model or that is large signal amplifiers. And if the variations of the input signal is less than or in the order of plus or minus 10% of present value, then we can say that this small signal model. So this is the um, basis on which we classify it as small signal or a larger signals. And we know that in general for analysis, we are using two port network model, two port network model, and in which we have input port that is used to give the input as shown in the diagram. That is we have uh, V input or V1 and I1 which is flowing inside and we have output voltage but we are given for biasing or whatever be the voltage we are taking output side so that can shoot the output port and the current is flowing like this moving inside so this is the generalized two port model and from that it is found that it is possible to consider two of these as independent variable because we have four variables v1 or that is vn and v2 I1 and I2. So we have four variables 
so it is possible to consider two of these as independent variables and other as a dependent variable and based upon that only we are writing the generalized equation for two port network like this that is v1 it is a function of i1 and v2 or i2 that is a function of f2 or function f2 of i1 and v2 so two variables are considered as independent and two variables are considered as dependent value and for example for low frequency model we are using hybrid parameters so the v1 and i2 can be expressed in terms of functions as v1 equal to h11 i1 plus h12 v2 and i2 equal to h21 i1 plus h22 v2 so this is the generalized equation and similar to h parameter uh, we have abcd parameter it is used for cascading network and we have some other parameters also like h parameters that is impedance parameter z parameter and admittance parameter and even though impedance parameter and admittance parameters are available for low frequency analysis generally we are using hybrid parameters and why we are calling this as hybrid parameter is that the units for h11 h12 h22 and h21 are different so that is why it is called as uh, hybrid parameter that is the units are not same the units for the h parameters are different and how to find the value of h11 h12 or that if we make v2 equal to 0 in the general equations then we can find that the first equation becomes v1 equal to h11 i1 so we can easily found that h11 equal to v1 i1 or if we want to find v2 value then we can make i1 equal to 0 so in the each equations by making one value v2 or i1 is equal to 0 then it is possible for us to find the hybrid parameters that is h11 h12 h221 and h22 there yeah. and as shown here h11 equal to v1 by i1 with v2 equal to 0 v2 equal to 0 and this parameter is called as input impedance the input impedance and h21 it is i2 by i1 with v2 equal to 0 so we see that it is the ratio between the output current to input current and that is current is flowing from input side to output side so we are calling this as forward current gain so forward current gain since it is the ratio of uh, current to current it has no units that is why it is given as uh, no unit and h12 that is the ratio between the two voltages so this parameter h12 is also having no unit because it is the ratio between voltage to voltage and this is called as the reverse voltage transfer ratio and h22 is the output admittance yeah it is the output admittance and since it is admittance its unit is mu and here we find that uh, input impedance as a un unit of ohms and remaining two units that is two parameters are having no units and h 2 t is output admittance is having the unit of mu that is inverse to ohm since it is admittance value and from that we can easily found that uh, h parameters have not having same units they are using different units and this is the hybrid model of a yeah, two port network so hybrid model is nothing but in terms of the h parameter we are replacing the transistor we are replacing the transistor that is in terms of h11 h12 h21 and h22 and in Walden books we can easily you can found that it is given as h11 h12 like that but since we are using different types of con configuration instead of using h11 h12 normally what you are using the term as forward current gain reverse current gain voltage gain reverse voltage gain like that the terminology is used and for a two port network the diagram shown here the diagram shown here in the general network so this is a general network this is the general network what we are uh, using for which in this parameter h1 so here we find that hi that is input impedance and this hi since it is an input impedance and output we have admittance since it is admittance it is connected in parallel yeah and 
the forward gain and reverse gain they are indicated in terms of the voltage and current they are indicated in terms of the voltage and this current so this is the standard notations that is used and for a transistor instead of a transistor we can replace this by that is a two port active device that can be replaced by this circuit so instead of a transistor circuits we can use the h parameter and we find that we have different we have different configurations common emitter and common base and common collector so to denote no difference or to identify the difference between each configuration what they are it is suppose it is common base configuration they are rated as rb so we can find that it is the rated with the common base transistor or hfe like that h yeah e so we can easily understand that it is for common emitter or hfb so it is a standard notation used for uh, indicating the h parameter hfp or hfb or hfc so from noting the uh, parameter name it is easily found or we can easily understand that uh, which configurations is drawn like that we can easily understand so the not only the parameter so denoting the value like hfp hfb is very very important it is very very important and even even though this model is seems to be simple for making analysis we are making some other modification in the uh, simplified circuits and why we are going for h parameter is that it is easy to measure and our real at audio frequencies and readily supplied by the manufacturer that is what uh, it is very very important one and whenever we are purchasing any transistor the details about all the parameters are available in the data sheets they are readily available by the data sheet because whenever we are going for uh, designing any transistor circuits that like we should know about the all this parameter what is the input impedance what is the output admittance like that then only it is possible for us to make use of uh, designing circuits so that the device may not gets damaged and it is convenient to use in analysis and design so for analysis and design definitely these parameters are required and can be determined from the transistor static characteristic so that is one uh, another advantage is that so by drawing the trans transistor characteristic curve these parameters can also be found out and all these uh, uh, parameter values and the characteristic curves are available in the Uh, data sets so data sets is very very important one and it is easily convertible from one configuration to other so that is suppose if you are designing a system in a common base configurations and if you want to convert it or if you want to find the value for designing in common emitter and common collector configurations it is by simple mathematical uh, formulation or using some formulas it is easily for us to convert the hybrid parameter values from one configuration to another configuration so, so suppose if you want to design a system from or change the system from common emitter configuration to some other configurations it is possible for us very easily without much difficulty we can find out all the required h parameters so normally the hybrid parameters they are denoted like this hi hf and hr and ho and depending upon the configuration that is as i told that they can denote like the hib hic like this hib and hfb like that they are denoting to indicate this common base common collector and common emitter configurations and this is a hybrid model that is what we earlier seen instead of block diagram the transistor is just replaced by this hybrid model and if you look into the equation you can easily found that the instead of v1 and i2 it is given as v g b la h i b like that h r b like that so that is why it seems to be somewhat difficult even though the equations are very very simple why it seems to be somewhat difficult for the students and even uh, for the faculty is the problem is that instead of writing v1 if you write it as v1 equal to h11 i1 plus h12 v2 then it seems to be very simple but if you are looking into this same equation in different forms like it seems to be somewhat confusing because this consists of so many terms why 
uh, we are using so many tenses because of the fact that we are using different configurations, like different configurations. So uh, first we have to clear to the students that uh, even though it is different, written in different forms, that they need not worry about that. If it is common base, then it is B. If it is common emitter, then the equation becomes only the V E C. Suppose if we tell that fact clearly that it is instead of common emitter, it is V E E. A student can easily understand that uh, just by name, this uh, only the naming of the information that it is for common base or common character signals. What is the hybrid model for common emitter transistor? Uh, if you look into the equation related to the common base, the same equation is written here, but it seems to be somewhat different. But if you look into the equation, it is only clear yeah, VBE equal to HIE. There, instead of BE, that is given as BE. That is HIEB to indicate the base, common base. Here it is indicated as HIE, like this HIE, that is to indicate that it is common collector. So if you look at the, even some standard textbook, many times they either they are using a common base circuit or common character circuits, and they will simply put it as um, similar to common base transistor or common emitted transistor. It is possible for us to design an equation, to design an equation or do, to design the current gain or output impedance like that. That is why they are given that instead of giving the derivation for different configurations, normally they will use either common base or common emitter configurations and they will give at the end of the derivation for other configurations similar to this we have to make derivation like that. They will not give in detail because they are having a similar fashion and if you look into the equations then you may find that the only difference we will find is only in the terminology, only in the terminology of H11, H12. Like that, that is instead of HIE, it may be HIC or uh, HIB like that only. Some slight modification only happened. So if you understand that, then it is uh, very much uh, useful and convenient for us just by understanding only one uh, analysis for either common emitter and the common base, uh, we can easily uh, do the derivations or what will be the required parameters for us related with other models also. And this is the hybrid model of the common collector transistor and here also we can easily found that the terminology CC, the terminology that is for common collector will come here. We are using the FC IC because it is common collector model. And if you look into the three model at the same time, then we can easily found that uh, how it is easy to remember and write the model for different configurations, yeah, different configurations. Since uh, due to lack of time or some other factors, since we are not showing all the three configurations, configurations at the same time, uh, students will get confused with that because they are always students are always students. So instead of understanding this, what they, they will they will try to mug up the equation as VBE, VCE, like that, they will try to mug up the equations. They consider that they are different forms, they are different equations. But so that we have to make clear them, try to understand the equation or the diagram for either common emitter or common base configurations and how we have to derive the equivalent model or equation for the other configurations. If you tell that, then definitely students will never forget and it is uh, also necessary for them to read yeah, this one model so that the other model can be easily reconstructed from the knowledge gained on either common emitter or common collector model. And this is the uh, typical H parameter values. H parameter value this is for common emitter, common base and common collector and as I told that these data are available, these data are available in uh, data sets. These data are available in data sets. And what is the guideline for analysis? Lab? Before going to analyze, there are some general guidelines that are replace the DC voltage source by a short circuit. Re replace the DC source by 
yeah, short circuits and replace the coupling and bypass capacitor by a short circuit. Yeah. So before going for analysis of it, the circuits, these are the facts that we have to do because we have a general circuits and in the general circuit, we have to replace the DC voltage by a short circuit and we have to replace the coupling and bypass capacitor by a short circuit. Definitely, we, we all understand that uh, at the input side, we have a capacitor that is coupling capacitor or uh, at the output side also, we have a capacitor for coupling one either input or from one circuit to another circuits and we have bypass capacitors definitely at the emitter of the transistors if it is a common emitter terminal and we have to replace by coupling and bypass capacitor by a short circuit then mark the points for base emitter and collector on the circuits and locate them as the start of the equivalent circuits that is in the equivalent circuits we have to clearly indicate uh, where the base emitter and the collector will start then replace the transistor by its hybrid model for example like this so we have to clearly indicate i think the diagram we are indicating here like in the diagram we are indicating here as base the collector here base collector like that we are indicating here but while making analysis we have to mark the point exactly at this point we have to mark exactly at here this is base this is collector like this you have to clearly indicate so that is what the last two point tells that uh, mark the point for base emitter and collector on the circuit and locate them as the start of the equivalent circuit and replace the transistor by its hybrid model so uh, consider this circuit that this is the uh, circuits for common emitter amplifier and we have in common emitter we have two types of circuits are available one is common emitter with a bypass re that is re this value bypass emitter resistance that is resistance to bypass resistor there is one circuit like this there is another circuits without bypass that is directly emitter is connected to the ground it is connected to the ground and if to look into the very simple circuit we can easily found that there are uh, coupling capacitor this is a coupling capacitor here this is one coupling capacitor here this is a coupling capacitor and we have one uh, bypass capacitor we have one bypass capacitor at the emitter terminal at the emitter terminal. so this is a general circuits so before making the analysis yeah uh, and here also we have the input lab we have the input source so as given the analysis point we have to replace the DC voltage. If there is any DC voltage, that has to be short circuited, not AC voltage. And replace the coupling and bypass capacitor by a short circuit. Then we have to replace the transistor by the hybrid model. So if you change this value, then this circuit, the same circuit will become like this. That is AC equivalent circuit of the common emitter amplifier. Yeah. Just like that, as we given in the guideline yeah, we are making the modifications then the main modification what we have to do is we have to replace the yeah, we have to replace the transistor we have to replace the transistor by its hybrid model so that will looks like if you change that then the circuit will resemble like this so this is so this transistor is now replaced by a hybrid model yeah, this is the hybrid model of the transistor is the hybrid model of the transistor and why it seems to be somewhat difficult for us that for analysis you can easily now find that if you want to explain the operation of a transistor then it is very easily we can able to explain because that will consist of only the theoretical part but whenever we are going for analysis purpose we find that the circuit seems to be somewhat complicated because of uh, the parameter used and here also we are using different types of current that is a input current output current then input impedance yeah, this is input impedance then output admittance and in addition to the load resistance and the input side what are all to be the resistance that are used like that now uh, analysis circuits become somewhat complicated analysis circuits somewhat becomes uh, complicated because it is really a complicated one but unless you understand the terminologies used like 
what is HRP, HRE, HIE, like that. If you are not clear about that, then this diagram definitely will give some trouble to uh, students because they think that uh, instead of learning the operations of a transistor in the second unit or first unit, uh, if you look this circuit, definitely they will be uh, somewhat find it difficult because it is normally this subject is for uh, second semester students for electronic devices. So once they, uh, they enter to the subject, that is electronic device subject, that is the, I think is a fundamental basic subject they are entering. Uh, definitely they will find it uh, difficult to understand this and to do the mathematical operations, not only the knowledge on or interest on this H parameter or other parameters required. In addition to that, they should be very familiar with circuit theory operations. They should be very familiar with the circuit theory operations because in analysis, we are going to calculate the value of current gain, input impedance, and effective input impedance, and state gain, and output resistance. These are the parameters we have to calculate from the after drawing this circuits in which we are replacing the H parameter by circuits or hybrid model. We find that we have to calculate all this value, current gain, effective input impedance, input admittance, voltage gain and output resistance. So the problem is that since they all involve the mathematical operations, unless they are familiar with circuit theory, uh, definitely it is difficult for them to understand the derivations. Even, uh, even for us faculty members, if you are not familiar with circuit theory or uh, the concept related to make the resistance a parallel and how to find the impedance or how to calculate the transfer impedance like that, definitely it will create some problem even for a teaching faculty. So it is advisable that before going uh, to take the class, those who are handling, uh, uh, please one or two times, uh, please try to understand the subject. Because uh, if you refer even any standard textbook, what they give is uh, after this diagram, after the simplified diagram, immediately the, what they will give is the current gain is A is given by A equal to minus HFE by 1 plus HOC into RL. And neglecting uh, output admittance, then A I equal to minus H. That is what they will give. They simply give, even in standard textbooks, uh, current gain they will give like this. Then input impedance they will give the equation for input resistance is like this. But how these steps will come? So that is the uh, problem. That is the problem. That is why student will not able to understand this. And uh, even I refer many standard textbook, but since the books is not uh, intended for giving the entire derivations, they will give the simply only the values of the current gain, input impedance, and effective input impedance. And during this type of situation only, uh, the local author or uh, local publisher book will help us. There are some standard textbooks are available, even though we call it as a local authors, but uh, we will not uh, discredit them really uh, those are the faculty members those who are taking a lot of efforts in writing the books and in many books i found that the intermediate steps how to find the current gain a equal to hfe by one plus hna d and they will give a detailed explanation for that there are many uh, local uh, publisher books are now available so please uh, refer that then if time possible, please explain to the student, explain to the student how the intermediate steps will come. Uh, the problem with the student is that why they are finding it difficult or not able to understand is that uh, since it is difficult for them to find out how the equation for current gain input impedance like this will come, AA equal to minus H, how this will come to understand from directly from the diagram is very, very uh, difficult. Uh, and the student point of it is very very difficult because we calculate this current gain we have to find the ratio between what is the input current and what is the output current so from the diagram we have to find what are the input currents and from the output side we have to find 
what are the output currents because if you look into the diagram the output current is not simply one current we have this current and the, this current ic is flowing like this and the load current which is flowing along this deck along this direction since we are neglecting this layer since we are neglecting one term because many time it is also uh, for making the mathematical calculation simple we are neglecting some term we are neglecting some terms so if you want to calculate this value this diagram hf in the minus i ib we should know the value of ic and il by considering that only we can able to calculate here and similarly on the input to find the input current we have to consider the ratio between the voltage the ratio between this input voltage and the effective resistance of this plus this resistance so input current may be calculated as v for example vi input current divided by so these two are parallel r1 and r2 are parallel so it is r1 parallel to r2 the r1 this is parallel to r2 and with that we have to add the value of r so this is consider the input current and similarly output current we have to calculate this value and if you look into that like we are not considering this like one hf is there here so we have to consider we have to consider this resistance also so after finding out the value of input current and similar to this after finding the value of output current and if we divide this then only we can able to get this equation then only we can able to get this equation there yeah. so that is a really a tedious process and uh, even though in the syllabus we are having common emitter common collector and the common base model definitely in i found that many time in exams they are asking for uh, either normally common emitter model and if you try to find the intermediate steps also for either one model and if we teach to our student definitely they can able to understand uh, one model and from that one model if you can able to understand then it is convenient for them to write the equation for other model also for other model also because uh, even though these equations are seem to be simple uh, suppose we want to really uh, find out how these equations are coming then we have to make all this analysis like this find the input current output current because how much gives some critical factors and uh, definitely as i told that yeah, within a short duration definitely it is not possible to learn all things and uh, since uh, it is a faculty development program and uh, almost in all universities are like, corresponding to this uh, electron device subject definitely there is on electronics uh, lab devices lab is available because it is a fundamental basic lab and uh, since this is ftp program and many faculties will uh, almost all faculties are available uh, i want to introduce some tools cad tools i want to introduce some two cad tools just i want to tell what is the advantage of those cad tools so that you can uh, make use of this tool and you can tell to your students so even in this pandemic period like without coming to the college just sitting in their home they can able to do all the experiments and really they enjoy the subject uh, mathematical analysis that may be one part but to get interest into that uh, what are be the circuits that is available in electronic books or instrumentation books that related to the electrical and electronics topics uh, two tools are very very uh, useful tools and that is freely available open source and another advantage is that there is no need to use net connection once you download it in offline you can able to use one is lt spice and then is pulse start circuit simulator pulse pulse start circuit simulator which is available in the website pulsestart.com or if you type it in the google pulse start circuit simulator then you can easily download it and multi sim live uh, to operate this you are in need of net connection but to operate lt spice and pulse start circuits now there is no need to uh, use the uh, online once you download it then it can be able to operate in uh, operate that i will this i will show you some demo on how to use this 
please try to make use of this and even you can uh, conduct some classes or within the classes when you can show this animation or the simulator tools so that the student can able to enjoy it just i will try to show you yes. so in small short time we can able to so one tool is so this is the tool that is from firstart.com thing i can you see this circuits i think all of you can able to see this now can you able to see the diagram yes sir so this is the software tool that is downloadable from pulsestart.com uh, pulsestart circuit simulator if you download it and open it then this figure this circuit will show and the advantage of this is that whatever be the electronic circuit that is available up to even uh, seventh semester you can do all the experiment here online and for example suppose i want to use uh, transistor circuits common basic so the what are the circuits available here that is from basic ohms law to all the law then ac circuits then passive filters then passive circuits then diode circuits half wave rectifier full wave rectifier like this then operation amplifier circuit suppose if you want to check with the operation amplifiers then full wave rectifier using operation amplifier just to select it then immediately the circuit will come then suppose you want to do any other circuit with the transistors so common emitter amplifier circuit just to check it then it will give the common emitter amplifier circuits for example now we want to analyze the common emitter some circuit or if you want to student want to do the experiment on common emitter amplifier just by clicking that we can able to get the circuits and on the bottom we can you can see that two waveforms are going it is like cro screen it is like cro screen and what are the parameter we want we can able to change like our ordinary cro so like just click here then it will show your screen like for ordinary cr so we can change the scale i think now we can able to see the difference in waveform that is moving down so we can change the scale and if you want to uh, show voltage then we can see the voltage suppose you want to see the current yeah, then it is possible to see the current so we want to see the power suppose you want to see the spectrum yeah that we can able to view it so, uh, suppose we want to see the spectrum definitely we are need a spectrum analyzer so what will be the waveform we needed for example if you want to see only spectrum just to click it then what okay, then we can find that here it will show the spectrum or if you want to see only the waveforms voltage it will so only the voltage and not only only two signals suppose if you want to measure what is the voltage across the diode what is the voltage across the transistor just click it then add scope add new scope then we can able to see one more scope and we all know that suppose if we want to see uh, two or three signals definitely with our normal cro it is not possible to see you know, more than two signals suppose if we want to see four or five signals definitely we need uh, two or three scopes or high cost scopes are available but if you want to see the voltage or current waveform at any point then just by clicking we can have more scopes are available we can make use of more scope and in addition to that uh, normally we know that in cro we can able to see only the voltages not possible to see the current there yeah. but here we can able to see the current waveform also we can able to see it and if we don't know need it just we can remove it just we can remove the scope then we can remove the scope and after constructing this i want to check what is the gain with the tan uh, resistance value if become from 10k to 1k i want to change it means yeah, just right click 
just click it then we have edit options then we can be able to change 10k to 1k then just you can see that the waveform that is moving here now it is entirely changed now it is entirely changed so without having uh, need for any equipment spending any cost yeah. suppose you want to check it 100k yeah, just to change it then we can able to easily you see this how the waveforms uh, shift up from one point to another point by changing this so really it is not possible to see even if you do it in our lab experiment even by spending very large amount so these are all possible but uh, in addition to already constructed circuits it is also possible to construct a new circuit like this and we can test it if you want to student want to do any experiment then you will construct the circuit like this on this wall and if you want to take a print out of the circuit then it is possible then there are a many export options are available then you can export it as an image and i can able to take a print out of it suppose if you want to uh, construct a new circuit the new component then circuit there is an option uh, last option we have called as blank circuits click it then circuit becomes blank so this is a new uh, breadboard like that and you want to paste the component with a right click then we can able to found all active components all electronic components are available. not only analog uh, components digital components are also available suppose i want to um, construct an off adder circuits for example simple off adder circuits then we have passive components input components available then outputs for taking leds then active component for example i want to add a diode just to take it then i have a diode so i want to add one resistor yeah. then add resistor so then i want to give a power supply then input source then i want to add ac source or i want to check uh, construct a circuit for off adder yeah. then we are yeah. and what i said then we need the yeah, ground connection then that is also available add ground so after placing the component yeah, we have to connect like we have to connect it so for that we have wire on just like what we are doing in our lab yeah we can connect it Just to connect it. After connecting, yeah, there is a run button. Just to run it. You want to make any modification? Yeah. Then we can reset it. And suppose I want to change the forty gates source into some other value. Yeah. Just edit it. Then we can change it to hundred gates. Change it to. immediately that will can see it. but we want to see the wave formula we can want to see the wave form so we want to see the output just right click yeah do in new scope so that you can beautifully see that now rectified wave forms are seen suppose if you want to see the input also let's to place the cursor on the input signal and you in new scope Just so we can able to see the two waveforms. One is the full sine waveform that is input. Then another is yeah, since it is an off-wave rectifier, we can see that it is a rectified waveform. And if you want to see the both waveform in the same screen, that is also possible. We have option combine just to combine the. Yeah. so that we can able to see the combined waveform so we can able to see the combined waveform and if you want to stop it yeah, just we can uh, stop then we can stop uh, what are the value we want to change then we can able to change it and 
even we can uh, slow the simulation speed so that we can uh, able to uh, like slowing down the CRO screen so that we can able to see the waveform and if you want to uh, change the directions of the diode and see how the waveform it looks like uh, that is also possible just we can uh, stop it yeah. just we can swap terminals so just like now the terminals are reversed diode is reversed just once run it now we can able to beautifully see that now because of change in diode you now signals are only coming at the bottom yeah previously we find that the signals are only on the like, green signals or rectified signals are on the positive side now the rectified signals are on the bottom side so definitely uh, even we use cr works definitely it is part not very difficult to see this type of waveforms by changing the diode what happens like this is beautifully uh, we can able to explain uh, what are the concept whether in the third unit fourth unit even for fit mass fit what are the circuit electronic circuit we want like we can able to uh, make use of this so uh, i request all faculty members uh, please uh, try to download it with the because it will not need any critical uh, thinking or aspects is not very very critical just like that we can place the component and it is user friendly and uh, another advantage is that since uh, even though you are all the yeah, blunt instrumentation department uh, many op amp circuits are available many op amp circuits that related with operational amplifiers are available mosfet operational amplifiers almost the even pll even pll for transmission line the yeah, many of the circuits that this is useful for uh, instrumentation people are available instrumentation students are available just like that you can able to click it even for off adder full adder even if you want to construct uh, test digital circuits la yeah, you can very easily check it just like that you can click then it becomes high or low like that you can easily uh, found out so this is one tool then another tool i want to sell you is that lt spice so if you download it and open this type of screen will available this type of screen is available and here also it is very simple then you can open a new schematic and in the top you can find the component you can find the components so if you want to place the diode then you can place the diode you want to change it control r uh, will change the diode so you can place the diode so not only diode what will be the com electronic component you need all the component may be uh, placed that's for simple uh, explanation only i use for example diode resistor la keep the resistor and other than the basic component like resistor capacitor the other components are available in the component palette you just click it then what are all the component that is needed for constructing electronic circuit even mosfet all components are available you can find easily found that transistor capacitor we need a power supply so just voltage so we have need voltage source then we need ground terminal so the need ground terminal so just as i told that we are in connecting probe is available so this we can able to uh, connect it easily can able to connect it So every time after making the connection, the yeah, want to remove just to replace that, just to press escape, then it will remove. Or uh, if you want to remove any diode or any section, uh, there is a scissor like cut tools available. So just to select that, so press it, then that will be section is removed. It's very simple. Just to make the wiring connection, wire. so like what we are doing in our lab it is similar to that setting the component placing and making the connection yeah so we want to uh, put the value for the resistor so place the cursor then right click it then we can put the value suppose i want to put it as 1k to 1000 ohms yeah then that is become 1000 ohms 
and since i want to suppose i want to add dc voltage then just like that you can put dc value and that becomes a dc value since that we want to use an ac signal yeah we go for advanced option in that we can have sine wave signal pulse wave exponential wave many types of waves are available since we want sine wave we can select sine wave so dc offset voltage zero amplitude for example take 2 volt frequency then find that x that's all yeah then so the actual the setup will becomes like this then to run it there is a run icon is available just to run it then it will ask for scope scope means it is like cro because now if we want to see the waveform we have to we have to properly set the control knobs for uh, frequency and time period so this is like the setting of uh, control knobs for time and uh, amplitude in a cro since we are using uh, 500 gets uh, we can have up to how many waveforms we can able to see like that we can have 1 millisecond and time from zero point time onwards we can able to note down the value these are some simple settings like cro settings so now we cro screen will come now the cro screen will come so if you want to see the waveform then right click then visible trace then what are all the uh, signal we want to see we can select it so it means that at a time we can able to find input voltage output voltage then uh, current through the diode current through the resistor that's what i told that these tools are very very efficient in a way that uh, in our cro it is not possible to see the current but here it is possible to see the current also it is also possible to see the current waveforms also suppose you want to see the only input waveform just to click that or if you want to see all the waveform the yeah. Just to select all, so you can see at the same time you can able to see yeah, a large number of waveforms. Or if you want to see only when only waveform, you can also it is possible to see. Suppose I want to change the frequency to be thousand. Uh, Just to place the cursor, right click it, then instead of five hundred, then we can able to change it as thousand. Very simple then. when it then we can able to see the multiple waveforms or if we want to see only when waveform then we can clear all that just click one waveform we can able to see only when waveform suppose if you want to see more number of waveforms only one waveform see here since we set it as 1 millisecond the only one waveform is seen to us when changes to 10 millisecond and we can able to see the yeah, 10 waveforms this is input waveform so if you want to change the color then also it is possible to change the color and if you want to see the waveform across the resistor layer so we have an option for that also so set the probe So now we can able to see that uh, since it is an off-air rectifier, the input is full wave, and off wave it is only uh, conducting for positive cycle. It is only conducting for positive cycles. We can change the color. So we can easily uh, show to the student. It is like ordinary CRO. If we want to expand it, we can zoom it or bring it to original level. Yeah. and here also it is found that yeah, at a time it is possible to see more number of waveforms but in normal level cr lab cr world it is possible to see only two waveforms but as i told that it is also possible to see many waveforms in the same screen it is a really a good opportunity for uh, the faculty members and the students also even in this pandemic period uh, if it is uh, text portion or if it's a theoretical part that we can download the book and we can read it but uh, for doing the practical definitely we need high cost equipment even for doing this small experiment uh, we all know that uh, the cost of the diode and resistors may be small 
but to purchase the power supply and to view or to see the waveform in a CRO, definitely we need uh, more than 10,000 to 20,000 rupees. So without spending any money, uh, we can do all experiments, um, either it is an analog experiment or digital experiments uh, using these two tools. These are most efficient tools and they are freely available. That is the main advantage. And as I told that, if you want to replace, if you want to replace the device, it is very, very simple. Uh, just cut it or if you want to move the device, just to select the device, there is option. We can move it. If you want it, like we can uh, rotate it. We can, now diode direction is changed. Once again, run it. We can run it, yeah. So that now we can able to see that the directions of the waveform is now changed. So instead of uh, reading only theoretically, uh, if your students are familiar with this, definitely they will enjoy. And it is also possible for a faculty members to conduct lab, lab to conduct even in online. We can conduct all the experiments uh, related to uh, almost all electronic circuits, other than some critical uh, circuits that is used in microwave and optical. Other than that, even up to sixth semester, all electronic experiments that related with um, digital electronics, analog electronics, and uh, that related with the instrumentation subjects, we are all can able to uh, conducted by this. Uh, I think uh, suppose if you are uh, any of you are interested or um, learning this, uh, please feel free to. Uh, send a message to me because I have the video on how to operate this. I will send it to you so that you can just going uh, on seeing that you can able to easily identify how to uh, use this tool because within the short time you may not able to or you may not it is difficult for you to remember how we are taking the component. I have the video also on this how to take the component, how to place the component and how to take the outputs I will send it to you and if you find time and if you are interested in conducting some workshop or such things related with your lab using these tools and not only these two tools uh, we have uh, almost 10 tools are available they are all freely available and out of the 10 tools nearly six tools are uh, once we download it we can use it offline and four tools are available but uh, for operating that, internet connection is needed. Yeah, internet connection needed. Since it is in a faculty development uh, program, really I want to um, show it so that all faculty members may be benefit uh, with this. The theoretical part, we can learn uh, once uh, by reading one or two times, but uh, doing practical or learning by doing is very, very important. Nowadays, the technique of learning will become entirely different. Instead of reading and learning, now the concept becomes uh, learning by doing. That is what they tell that um, modern education, what they call it as uh, learning, not by reading, learning by doing. So to learn by doing, so the practical components are needed. And by using this open source tools, uh, let us enjoy the subject and let us make our students also to enjoy. And with this, uh, I think uh, it is uh, already getting late. Uh, so really I want to uh, thank the organizers and Dr. S. Salachi, Madam for giving an opportunity to me. And if you want to ask uh, any query, please, I am ready to answer.